Hey, welcome to Hear God's Word. This is Michael. In this podcast, we study and dissect the Bible to better understand what it means and is trying to say. Whether we cover intense word studies or simple stories, there's so many layers and it's all important. So, if you want to hear what God has to say, then let's dive in. Hey everyone, I'm so glad that you joined today and we are actually going to now be starting on the second chapter of Genesis and this is probably going to be one of the shortest episodes that we're going to do. We're going to be covering Genesis 2, 1 through 3 and in my opinion, I think that this three verses actually should be technically be probably part of chapter one. However, the people who originally put together and assigned the chapters and the verses, they obviously made their own decisions. At the end of chapter one, actually, we have another of the section markers. So in one sense, Technically, it is the end of a section, and yet even these first three verses, we have another section marker, which is the letter P in Hebrew again. So we can see that in one sense, this is its own block that it's talking now about the seventh day or the day that God rested. And we're actually going to get into a really interesting piece because honestly, this concept of rest actually reoccurs many times. And the word in Hebrew for rest is Shabbat, which ironically, is actually the name of the seventh day of the week. And all of the other days is day one, day two, day three, day four, day five, day six. But then now we don't just have day seven, even though it does call it the seventh day. The seventh day in Hebrew is actually called Shabbat, which means rest because God rested or he stopped. He rested from his work. And we can even see this in our own reflection of how we go about work weeks. Of course, we in different cultures have different patterns. In one sense, we could take a look at slavery and say, well, if you look at them, none of them ever had any days to rest. Like, that's totally unfair. And I would say, I totally agree. In fact, God had to, later on in the story, remind them that they should be remembering and keeping the Sabbath holy. So let's take a step back now that we've been talking about the seventh day and talk about the first verse where it starts off by saying how the heavens and the earth were finished. So let's start at least with that first. And that's very plain and simple. This is marking the end of what was started at the very beginning. So this is the conclusion verse of Genesis 1-1, you know, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. So this is the end of the beginning, in a sense. So this is the end of the creation, at least. So then we have the mysterious phrase after it talks about the heavens and the earth, and it says, and all the hosts of them. So that was in the ESV So let's take a look at some other versions and see if we can figure out what it's trying to talk about. So some versions like the NIV, the New International, say, in all their vast array. So kind of talking about the vastness and 
the array meaning essentially a, a wide variety and a long sequence of different things. So obviously we talked about that and we talked about the chain of the things that God's made. So that makes sense. It's a little bit weird wording, but we have essentially vast arrays, hosts, but then there's other versions such as, let's take a look at the NLT because as I mentioned, that's a easier to understand version. And it says, and everything in them was completed. So here we can see that the host or the vast array is essentially everything. So that actually makes a lot of sense. And there's one other theory that I'll propose in a minute, and I don't necessarily and personally subscribe totally and only to the theory, but I do believe that it could be a part of what is talked about in the host. So I also wanted to open up the net version Again, as I mentioned, it's a pretty good scholarly translation, and let's see what it has to say in this one for the word for host. It says in a textual note, and all the host of them, it says, here host refers to all the entities and creatures that God created to populate the world. And the translation in the net version is the heavens and the earth were completed with everything that was in them. So that's just very plain and intelligible. So we can see that the very most basic meaning that we can take out of this, even if there happens to be more layers potentially behind it, at least what we can get out of it is this is the end of the heavens and the earth being created and everything that he made. So plain and simple. Now I want to take a minute though like I mentioned, to go over one of the other theories of what the word host can mean. So, many of you may be familiar with the story of Jesus' birth, and in Luke 2.13, you may recognize this verse where it says, And suddenly there came with the angel a multitude of the host of heaven, praising God and saying glory to god in the highest and so there you guys can see where it's talking about the angel and many of them like uh the word is plethos so a plethora like many angels of the heavenly host so what kind of host the heavenly host so this is even though it's in a different language the one that i just read in luke was in greek but we're reading in hebrew right now it's the same sort of concept because the bible even though it was written in two different languages and technically three at the same time we have most of the same concepts and the jews even carried over a lot of the meanings of their words over into greek and adapted the way that they spoke the greek language so in one sense even though this only says the hosts, and in Luke it says the heavenly hosts. It could be a specific reference to either that God created 
the hosts, which were those heavenly beings or angels or other gods, or it could be also referring to that they were there present while God was creating things, as we've talked about as one of the theories, or it could also potentially be simply talking about the stars, since many times the stars and the lights in the sky were viewed by many as the heavenly beings, and they were worshipped as such, and they were represented and symbolic of the hosts in the heavens. So that's another theory. And the other theory, which is the one that is in most translations of the Bible, I think the most solid and comprehensive answer for this, which is what we read earlier, which is essentially everything. You know, it's talking about the, as it mentioned in the Net Bible, like we read, uh, specifically referring to the entities and creatures that God created to populate the world. And that would even include the things in the heavens as we mentioned, so it definitely includes the stars as well as all the animals and even the stars, even if they were viewed and represented as sorts of gods to other nations and even to the Hebrews. They sometimes even refer to the other gods of other nations. They did believe that they're were other gods, but it's also complicated because at the same time, they believed that no other god was even in the same category as the one creator of heaven and earth. And we will get to who that is in the next episode because we're actually going to finally have a name reveal of who this god is that is making everything. So from here, now we're going to move to the second verse where it's talking again about the seventh day and God resting from the work. So the question is, was God exhausted and tired and he needed to rest from his work? It doesn't say, but I think we can assume that God was not too tired physically from doing labor. Instead, it seems clear that he was reflecting, taking time to stop and pause and set an example. In one sense, God stopped because there wasn't any work left to do. It says that he finished the work. So he had made all the good things that he intended and planned. And so from here on, let's see where the story goes. Because essentially, God's created everything that at least needed to be there. So... One other thing I wanted to point out, which there will be a few things. I know I was mentioning how the word for rest in Hebrew is Shabbat, and we actually have the seventh day of the week in Hebrew, as well as even Greek and other languages. It is the word for rest and some are transliterated, such as in Greek, it's Sabadon, which you can hear the similarity to Shabbat in Hebrew. And in English, we have lost this because the names of the week in English are actually named after other sort of gods, such as for example, Saturday, 
is named after Saturn. Sunday is named after the sun. And Thursday is named after Thor. So the gods or the days of the week in English, we don't have the same naming convention as the Hebrews when it comes to days of the week. So we've actually lost the notion of day one through six being work week and then day seven being rest day. So even later on when the Israelites became slaves, God actually had to remind them and he gave them a commandment to remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. So that brings up the next point, which in verse 3 ends up making the seventh day special and he blesses it, as it says. And like we talked about in the last episode, a blessing means to kneel down and it means to put something good on to something else. And so God is putting something good into this seventh day. He is setting it aside from all of the others as special. And speaking of which, that is actually the definition of the word holy. So the word holy actually means to be set apart. And you can think about it in this way. So what something means to be holy is for it to be set apart and aside from everything else. So, for example, we have an example in the Bible of where God tells one of the characters in Exodus, Moses, he tells him to take off his sandals because it's holy ground. And you may be like, why does that matter? But just think about it. If you go to a friend's house, and let's just say they have the tradition of taking off the shoes because they don't want to get dirt inside the house. Like the outside, you know, that's where you can go get dirty, but you don't want to come and drag the dirt and the mud inside. It's a special place. It's set apart from the outside. And if you come drag that dirt inside, you're defiling that special place. Like the home is special. It's not meant to drag dirt into. And so I believe that's a semi good example to give you a picture to where if we have something that God or even people can create things that are holy, like for example, you know, holy water. Technically, it's nothing special. It's literally just the same kind of water as all other water, but it is set apart and aside. So you don't want to go take the holy water and do something normal and typical with it because that's the wrong use for it. And so many people think that the opposite of holy is evil. However, the opposite of holy is actually the defilement of something special. So it's essentially to use something as meaningless and just typical and normal. And so we're going to see this theme develop more through scripture, but I at least wanted us to get a handle on this. And there's one last thing that I wanted to talk about, which is something that I actually never knew till recent years. And it seems obvious probably to most people, but I never realized that the seventh day was actually 
Saturday, as I was mentioning earlier. I grew up my entire life hearing the Sabbath being Sunday, and that goes into a lot of tradition with the Roman Catholic Church at the beginning of early church history, only a few centuries from the time of the early church starting, but it is at least an important fact that I wanted to mention because when it's talking about the Sabbath, it's specifically referring to what is our Saturday, which is the seventh day of the week. And you can see that even by looking at a calendar, you look, the first day of the week is actually Sunday. And it's also a weird paradigm that I've had to get used to. And this brings up one quick thing that I'll mention. So I keep and celebrate the Sabbath on Saturdays now because of what I mentioned where later on specifically asks and reminds his people to keep the Sabbath set apart. And so that is actually in the Ten Commandments, and I would say basically on God's top ten list of things that is important to him that he wants for us to keep. And so whether that is something that you believe personally or not, I believe that it's something very much worth considering since God set this precedent from the very beginning. He didn't have to rest on the seventh day because God doesn't get tired, but at the same time, he had finished what he needed to do, and he also says that we should work six days and finish what we need to do so that we can rest and keep that day that is his day set aside. And so uh, whether you believe that this is the way that things work, um, and we'll go through more scripture in the future, um, at the same time, I wanted to at least expose you guys to these biblical principles and share also my story and perspective over the last few years and part of my journey in coming to realize how important of a topic this is to God's heart. So then it wraps up by saying that essentially all of this was because he rested from all the work of creating that he had done. So obviously the work that God was doing was creating. And so this was all work for God. And obviously it wasn't so hard to the point where God couldn't have kept going. But as we mentioned, God had completed everything that he needed to. And I believe that this also sets a precedent that whatever God starts, he perfects and finishes. And we'll see this also as a theme going throughout the rest of the Bible in the book of Genesis and all through all 66 books. So with that, we also have another section marker that ends this section. So only three verses, but at the same time, a uh, very profound few verses. And this actually finally wraps up the creation story. And yet, at the same time, we actually are about to go into another section of the creation, and it's actually going to rehash in more detail some of the specific parts of creation. So I'm looking forward to going through that with you guys.
Hey, I'm so glad you guys could join for today's podcast. I hope things click for you and that you're better able to understand God's word. Jesus said, whoever has ears, let them hear. So keep listening to what God has to say. I'll see you guys next time. God bless.